This is the Stop Time Podcast. I'm your host, Lisa Hopkins, and I'm here to engage you in thought-provoking motivational conversations around practicing the art of living in the moment. I'm a certified life coach, and I'm excited to dig deep and offer insights into embracing who we are and where we are at. So my next guest made his Broadway debut as a drifter in Beautiful and was a part of the original Broadway company of Frozen before taking on the lead role of Kristoff full-time. He has appeared off-Broadway as Omar in To My Girls at Second Stage Theater and recently played Nick Carraway in The Great Gatsby uh, at Paper Mill Playhouse. His film work includes the horror comedy Summoning Sylvia, The Sixth Borough, The Fiji Incentive, and his television credits include the breakout role of Frankie in the Showtime series Fellow Travelers, which is streaming now and looks amazing. I've not checked it out, but I am going to. Um, and I'm really, really looking forward just to sitting down with Noah J. Ricketts today. Welcome, Noah. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It is such a pleasure. So what's, uh, just where are you now? Let's just sort of set the context. What's going on for you right now? So I'm literally in Mexico. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I try to get out of, I try to get out of New York when it gets a little gloom and doom and, and stay in some sunshine. And I've spent the last like, mm, I guess like nine weeks in the rehearsal space with, with those horrible overhead lights that make you feel crazy, like you're in the hospital all the time. And then in the dark theater, with spotlights so i needed some like actual sunlight in my life so i am in mexico which has been nice amazing how long are you there for i am here for about two weeks yeah that's wonderful and i'm curious to know um where are you like in that tra trajectory are you at the beginning of the two weeks in the middle towards the end where are you i'm only um i think i'm only like three days in like three or four days in yeah i'm at the at the beginning so fantastic Got a, I got a long ride here, which I'm, I'm, it takes a while for me to, to lean into relaxation, especially like living in New York. So yeah. I feel like I need those extra days to kind of like, oh, okay. Totally. That makes sense. And are you at somewhere where you've been before or is it somewhere brand new? Yeah. Somewhere I've been before. It's probably like, like maybe fifth time here, which I like too. I don't feel any pressure to like do anything or like see anything. I can just like hang out. I love that. I love that. You kind of skip that whole element. Yeah. Yeah. So talk to me a little bit about, well, where are you at energetically right now? And it sounds like a bizarre question a little bit, but I'm curious. Now, I know that you've been off a really busy time. Yeah. And that you're now, what I love already, what I'm learning about you is that you know what you need. And so uh -huh. you're, you're giving that to yourself right now. So yay, that's great. Um, and I'm just curious to know, where are you at sort of in terms of, you know, are you, are you a think ahead person? Are you thinking when I get back, like, do you have stuff lined up? Are you, are you leaving it open? Where do you go from? Yeah. I mean, I've, as soon as I get, you know, the plan, the plane lands and the wheels are on the ground, it's like, I'm off to the races again. So, you know, I feel like energetically, I feel a little bit like I'm empty. Like I'm a little bit like, um, like, like a little bit, like the well is kind of empty. Mm -hmm. I've spent many, the last, honestly, last couple of years, just like working, 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 and like giving away a lot of creative energy. And I feel like I'm at a place where I'm, I'm attempting to kind of like refill the well a bit and kind of give back to myself. And I feel like as artists, like you give, give, give to projects and this and that and and concerts and you know whatever it may be but when it comes to like you know refilling the well I, th I don't think we do that enough and definitely not taught to do that so that's what I'm attempting to do with my time here is kind of give back to self and get back to get back to me that's amazing and that's huge and it's vulnerable isn't it a little bit yeah, it is. And I have to be honest, like, I'm not sure how to do it, but I'm attempting to do it because I can, I, I, I could feel it coming on for the last couple of months. Just like, you know, you, when you start giving yourself to these projects, I'm sure, you know, it's so consuming, like it's so energetically consuming all of you, like your physical body, your mental energy, yep. everything you've got. And, um, I'd spent the last couple of months, like, getting this new musical off the ground. So I, I, I need a little, I need a little back, you know? 
Yeah. Do you give yourself space to acknowledge what you've done and what you've given? I under, I'm hearing you say that you're, you're aware that you do give and give and mm -hmm. give and produce and, you know, and all of that, but do you actually also give yourself grace for that, for the action of doing that? Do you know what I mean? For giving of yourself? I'd probably say not enough. And it's only in times when I hear someone like you, like when you just read that bio back and I'm like, oh yeah, that and that and that and that, that I, that I realize like the length of time and, and the projects and how much like I've actually done. And so I think it's kind of rare that we stop and look at our lives and are like, oh yeah, I did that. And I did that and did that and give grace to ourselves. But it is something that I should ch try and practice some more because I, I actually don't think I do it very often. Yeah. And what do you think about now? It's interesting. Maybe you've not experienced this because from my research, it seems like it's been your trajectory has been very quick, right? From the, from the moment you got invited to, to do the Carol King musical, mm -hmm. it was kind of, you hit the ground running, right? Was that, was you like your first time in New York? I think. Yeah. I was in New York for like a couple of weeks and that's yeah. kind of like how that got off the ground. I mean, I think it's very interesting because like what the, what the public sees and what is the truth, as you know, are like two different things. I had been, I had been, you know, preparing and training, like, since I was a kid, I mean, I was a baby. So, you know, going to dance class all the time, going to my voice lessons all the time, my acting class, you know, doing the scene work that nobody saw, thank God. And <laughs> like, <laughs> so by the time I got to New York, I remember this feeling of just like, oh my God, I'm so sick of talking about it. Let, let's just freaking do, do it already. Mm -hmm. You know, you train so much that you just like, I'm sick of training. I just want to do the thing I have trained for. Totally. And so I was so blessed. Like, you know, that show, they needed someone super last minute. I literally just like got off the plane and came to New York and it it kind of like, you know, rocket launched me into stuff, which was wonderful. Yeah. And has there been any lull for you or has it been pretty much straight on one thing after another? You know, I think like it's been I've had a lot of like one thing after another which is really good but I think in the in the doing of the jobs I've always realized that I wanted more and I think that was kind of like the thing I had to learn during the process like you know I got my first Broadway show and I finally was on Broadway a goal that I worked like so many so many decades to like to accomplish and then I one day I remember being like okay like what's next and I had that feeling which was like a scary feeling feeling because you work so hard to get to like the first step and then you're like well what else do I want with my life and then it was from there that I had to I realized like I wanted to tell stories I didn't want to just support in the background and do other you know support other people's stories I wanted to be the one telling the story and so that began this whole kind of other journey that led me to Frozen and you know like playing my first principal on Broadway so I feel like in the job that I've done I've always gained this understanding of what I wanted to do next. Interesting. Yeah. And is that, does that sort of present itself as a kind of bucket list or is it more of a feeling that there's more that you have to give? I think, I guess I'd say like a little bit of both. You know, I think you get into these situations that you've romanticized so much in your life and, you know, the glitter rubs off and you're like, okay, well, I'm the only person responsible for me. And like, what am I leaving behind when I leave this earth? You know, like what, what is this legacy that I'm leaving behind? And like little by little, I've like pieced that thread together and it's gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. So I think that's the kind of understanding I take from it. And the bucket list thing was definitely like at the beginning of my career, you know, I wanted to be on Broadway. I didn't care how it happens. I just, <laughs> wanted, I just needed to make it happen. You know, I wanted to be on TV. I wanted to do a movie, you know, like I, things that I wanted to do. That was definitely a bucket list aspect. And then as I've done them, I've gained a greater, greater awareness of myself and like the contribution I kind of want to leave when I leave this earth. Yeah. It's interesting. That that is one of my questions, which is, you know, how do you how do you want to be remembered? I mean, I think like unintentionally, I've kind of like started this. I created this path for myself of first, like of of like kind of pioneering, you know, like when I was when I was growing up, like when I look back, I think of how delusional I was to even get into the acting space because I didn't see 
black gay men on television. I didn't see them in movies. I, did, I didn't see their stories reflected on Broadway. I, I, you know, barely saw people of color at that time. And so to like have these, these two things I was holding at the same time be a real existence in my life and not see them portrayed through my art, my artistry is, was a huge challenge. And it wasn't until I got, you know, into the industry that I realized like, hey, there's this giant gap. And now when I look back at the, the TV and the movies that I was attracted to, it was the niche love stories of, you know, a black gay couple, you know, like it was these little tiny bits and pieces that I was so attracted to and I couldn't find out why. And I'm like, oh, well, that's a reflection of me. And I think what I want to leave behind is, is that legacy of like, you know, you can be a black gay man and lead a television series. You can be a, a black gay man and be different and and lead a Broadway show and nothing is a hindrance to you, you know, like you can, you can actually do the thing. And so I think as I, you know, I've had a lot of young people, you know, other boys and girls of color look up to me and I, I never like aspired for that to be a thing. It just kind of happened. And now that I know that it's a thing, I, I feel this like great importance to give back to my little self, you know, like little Noah that never had that. And to all the people that are behind me, like working hard to, to, to get there. So I hope that answers your question, but that's. The word ease is coming to me. You mm. know, you kind of, you said that I was, I can't remember what word you used, but you did say that you were a little bit, you know, delusional. I think you said delusional mm -hmm. to think that a gay, you know, and it's interesting because what the way I see it is you weren't delusional at all. In fact, you were completely undel because it is delusional to think that those those people cannot do it. That's delusional. Mm -hmm. And so to me, what I'm feeling is that you actually came into that later because it sounds like, and I could be wrong, but it sounds like you kind of came into it and it happened and you never really thought about that mm -hmm. until you got there and people were like, wow, you're the first this and the first that and the first other. Is that is there anything in there that I'm hearing? I think I I I think you're totally I think you're spot on with that. And and I think like we pick up so much from the world around us and like, you know, what we see reflected back to us. And I think like that's a narrative that I've picked up and never even explored myself until maybe this this very moment. But I mean, you're so right. Like I never set out to be the first. I just knew that I could do the thing. Like I and I didn't know how, and I didn't see a path, and I then there no one guiding me toward it, you know, besides the teachers that saw talent in me and helped me usher me along. But like, I just had this unwavering sense that like I can do that thing, yeah. And uh, and so I just kept making, I just kept trying to put one foot in front of the other and like make that damn thing happen. And I think that would be my advice to to anyone. You know, your biggest obstacle is yourself. And that's something I have, have learned and, you know, learned and unlearned and relearned and everything in between. And I, I think that is the important thing that it's a great reminder to myself and a great reminder to anybody listening is like, you are your greatest obstacle. And if you feel like you can do this thing, then just, you have to figure out the ways to, to do it. Exactly. I mean, you're talking about agency, which, yeah. which is colorblind. Yeah. You're talking about humanity, which is colorblind. You're yeah. talking about a young human and sexuality, all of that. That has nothing to do with it. You're talking about the feeling of I, Noah, yeah, can do this. But you didn't go, I can do this. It sounds like I can do this despite the fact that I'm black and I'm gay and I'm from Kentucky and you yeah. know, all, all the things that people would tell you. Right. And those are their limiting beliefs. So limiting beliefs are things that that are, like you said, brought on by society. And then we start going, oh yeah, I'm going to do that, be, you know, and it's interesting because I would I would encourage you to, you know, yes, that exists. Those big limiting beliefs exist. But if we play into them by the way that we interact in the world as a black gay male actor, then you're you're wasting energy. You're you're it's, you're giving it power. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're it, you're fighting it, and you're and fi it's unsustainable if you're fighting it, right? Because you lose your why. Your your why, your why was not to come into the world and prove something. If you happen to be proving it along the way, then great. It's just like your your why is not to, you know, be wealthy. If you happen to get wealthy doing what you do, then great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but but you want to stay. That's not the goal, right? Do you see what yeah. I'm? Yeah. 
Yeah, it's so fascinating to me. And it's really wonderful to meet you. See, I felt this in you. I felt this, this, um, this, well, I guess this agency and this authenticity, this sort of believing in yourself, not despite, there's no caveat. You know what I think? That's like, I mean, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've all like, when I think about my younger self, I mean, I've always lived in this, this like world of, of like, why not, you know, and I, it was like a big problem growing up. Like I would question everything. I'd be like, well, why not? You know, like <laughs> church, school, anything. I would ask the questions you probably, you know, that you get slapped on the wrist for, for asking. Yeah, good for and you. I think that's also like one of the, I mean, it's like a great quality to have that I, that I realize now is that like, why not? Why, why can't you do the thing? You know, what's holding us back? Yeah. It's yeah. your superpower. It's really your superpower. Hmm. Hmm. Like, I feel like, I feel like what, it wouldn't matter what you did or where you applied it to, mm. you, you would be that way. Mm. It has nothing to do with the arts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. As I become a scientist. No. <laughs> well, well, it's really interesting because, yeah, and I really do believe that, you know, the, the way we do one thing is the way we do everything. So, you know, yeah. if we, it's, which actually brings me to, let me ask you this. If you if you couldn't do or chose not to, so I don't want to I don't want to imply that there's some kind of you know you can't do this because that makes you want to fight maybe, but yeah. but if you couldn't for whatever reason or there was no arts, <laughs> what mm. would you do? What would you do? Interesting. So I I always had this fantasy of <laughs> this guy sounds silly, but being a plastic surgeon, and it's because it is because I used to sneak in and watch that show Nip Tuck. I don't know if you remember that show Nip Tuck. And like, I wasn't supposed to watch it and it was super racy. And like, I was like, oh, like that would be so cool. So I always used to say like, oh, I wanna, I wanted to be a plastic surgeon. Now I think, you know, now I think I would do whatever gives me the most free time <laughs> and with the biggest financial reward. Like now I think like it would be something like that because like, what I love to do, like if I is is get lost in in the world of wonder and read books and paint things and play the piano for hours and do all that stuff. So whatever would afford me a lot of time and a good amount of money, I think that's what I do. So if you figure that job out, you let me know. I will. Well, you could create it, right? I mean, right. My God, you're you're Noah Javer. <laughs> it's come on. <laughs> I I figure that Why out. not? <laughs> Why not? Exactly. No, well, seriously. I, I mean, it's funny because somebody might say, I don't know, uh, answer the same question. I'm not sure. Um, and just get curious, which is good. There's no right or wrong answers, but you know, it's um, the fact that you can even sort of, you know, into it something, you know, you kind of, it was actually pretty specific. You weren't not sure what the job is, but that's because the job hasn't been created. Yeah. 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 So I feel like it'd always be whatever it was. It'd always be arts adjacent, you know. Like I'd always, it would be somewhere around there, no matter what I was doing, you know. So that's that. I love that. What would you say is your guiding principle? Like, is there one that kind of like, if you wake up in the morning, you're feeling down or whatever? Is there something that you say or something that you think or something that gets you going or maybe just something? I don't know. Hmm. I wake up and I feel like that. You know, like. I, I guess like I have a, I have a pretty good ritual. Like every morning I, I wake up and I do my morning pages or my daily mm -hmm. journal thing. And I feel like with whatever I say in that, no matter what it is, like it's the act of kind of like getting out of my head and into my hand and kind of moving, letting the feelings move through. Like that is what kind of like gets me into life and gets me into the day. And like that has, has, been a world of wonder for me because I've discovered things that were causing me anxiety that I didn't even know were there. And I've, I've, you know, gotten creative on the page in a way that just allows me to feel free and feel really flowing. So like, I don't know that I have a phrase or uh, something that I look to every day. Cause I feel like that is constantly changing. And, but I do know that my daily practice is to sit with myself and mm. check in with myself and say like, how are you doing today? you know, how'd you sleep? What are we going to do? You know, that love type. It. Yeah. I love that. I love that. I think I asked you in the, in that little form that I sent you, what, if anything, do you think stands between you and who you want to be? And you said getting the world on board with my vision of the future, which I thought was interesting. I do see a world where like, 
people are allowed to be themselves and be who they want to be. And I think sometimes I like, you know, being in like these industries, I, you run up against obstacles, you know, you're called like, I remember being called like the out of the box choice for a role. And I was like, I'm, there's nothing out of the box, (laughs) like about like, like what skin tone, like, you know, like, you know, so I feel like what I meant by that is like getting the world to like clear out all of its shit and like accept people for where they're at, who they want to be that day. Maybe they want to be someone different tomorrow, accepting people in, in different positions, like whether it be on TV, whether it be in, in the ballet, like it doesn't matter what it is. But I think like my vision of the future is a world where anything goes, people are allowed to free flow and be who they want to be. And work without limitation mm-hmm. absolutely yeah. yeah i love that i'm with you i'm i'm sitting in it for a minute it feels lovely oh. doesn't it? <laughs> i just think it's so true i think it's so oh true. yeah and it'd be so easy it's so obvious and i right. think that's what makes it super frustrating you know mm-hmm. it, that people that sometimes i think about the year we're in and I'm like, how can we still be so small-minded about things? Yeah. Old and I think- I heard. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I think critical thinking is like a lost art form in itself. You know, oh, yeah. like we, we are just so full of opinions and labels and boxes that like we, I, I think we forget to stop and think. Do you know, and like- I, think again. And think again. And I'll, uh, and- allow there to be paradoxes and allow things, you know, one thing, maybe, you know, a whole two things in your hand at the same time. And I think the simple act of that could solve a lot of the world's issues. Yeah. You're speaking yeah. my language. There's something that I read on Instagram of yours that it, we can talk about it or not, but I was just curious because it stood out to me. Um, and you talked about the hardest year of, of my life. You said so many dark days, so many, you're talking about 2020, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so many sad moments, said so much wine. Here's to unimaginable, unimaginable change. Here's to moving forward without a path. And here's to the reflective moments I never wanted, but seriously needed. I love that. It's beautiful. Mm. Yeah, I mean, so so 2020, I mean... That's a hard year for a lot of people, as we should yes. say. <laughs> yes, indeed. But I remember like, um, actually like pre-pandemic, I was working on Broadway. I was playing Christoph on Broadway and I had done, I mean, I was coming up on like year three of the thing, you know, like I was tired and I wasn't including like the three years before doing another show and all of the work before that, you know, working to get to the show. Mm. And so I was feeling really creatively drained and 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 actually physically exhausted you know my my voice was going my body was going and I didn't have any free time you know like you know eight shows a week plus trying to like keep myself in sync to do the actual job was taking up all my time and so I remember leading up to the pandemic time I had a panic attack in my dressing room and it was the first time I had ever, I really experienced that. And it was bad. It was bad. And like my beautiful friend, the the dance captain of the show, like truly came and calmed me down. And it was just that I had been running so fast and so hard and like doing the opposite of everything I talked about, which was like checking in with me. And so I, I finally did. I said, Hey, I, I talked to, you know, Disney and I said, Hey, I need, I need like six weeks off. Like I need like real time to heal and recover. And like, I, am lost I need to like come back to me and the it is so crazy but the day that I asked for time off that I knew I was getting it pandemic hit and everything shut down and so I got a text universe said okay <laughs> the universe really listened and um I got a text from our like associate director and he was like man you really wish that that time off into being huh and I was like I, I guess so and so you know we're into the pandemic and you know what was a short time became a long time and very quickly into that, the job I thought I was going back to, we were on a Zoom call for two minutes and was pulled out from underneath me. And I think it was like, I mean, it was like one of the scariest times of my life. You know, the world was up in arms. Every We were so, you know, germaphobic at that time about, every, you know, everything. 
we didn't know how things were going to go. And I, the only things I knew were I'm not going back to this job. Everything that I work for has just, the carpet's been completely pulled out from underneath me. And I had to like sit with that. I had to like get, you know, get uncomfortable, get comfortable being uncomfortable really. And for the first time in my life, and because I wasn't running around, I got to think about like what I want to do. And I had, speaking of bucket list, I had some bucket list things I wanted to do. Like I, <laughs> I realized like I could no longer go on like doing my art form in the way that I had done it. I needed to do work that was important, that had a message behind it, that was for all of the things I listed before. And that was like a non-negotiable for me. Like I was like, you're like, life is going to end. Like time is short. And it, that moment was real for me. And I was like, I have to do things that I want to do. And my, my activism is doing it through my, my art form. Mm. And, you know, another huge goal that I wanted to accomplish was to be a series regular on television. And I was like, you know, now is the time I have to make this dream work. And I had nothing to help me out with that. Like, you know, like just me and my, my why not. And that was that moment, like, you know, sitting with myself and realizing my own dreams and then working step by step to make it happen. And like throughout that, you know, I started to get little TV gigs and and life started to come back. And it was that dark moment that actually was the greatest moment of my life because it completely changed the trajectory of my life. I, I, I stopped apologizing. I was very, you know, conscious of how I used my time. And I really kind of got clear on my central message of how I wanted to move forward with my career and with my art. So that's what that post is about. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, it is beautifully written, by the way, but it's also so evocative. So thank you for, you know, for sharing that with us. It's really beautiful. Yeah. I love Oof, that. 2020. Woof. I know. But I love that the the me and my why not. Like that's the way you roll, right? Yeah, I think so. You helped me realize that for sure. <laughs> I feel it. I love it. Um, what would you say is your like your Achilles heel? Like what's your what's your weak? Do you know what I mean by that? Like what's your weakness? Wine? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm I with think, you on that. No, no, I think like you know, I think my own weakness, I think sometimes is like my own neuroses. Like, I think like, I think sometimes I get, if I don't do a good job of getting the thoughts out of my head, like flowing them through, I spin and spiral. And I think in the spin and spiral comes frustration and comes frustration with the world and then anger. And then, you know, I, I lose sight of like what the point was at the, at the very beginning. And I think that would, I think that is sometimes what happens to me and I feel like I'm on like this like world clock of where that happens and I've got to get back to self and then I come all the way back around you know mm. I think that 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 is the thing and it's like you know as humans it's like this whole like relearning the things you already knew mm -hmm. and it's that cycle for me so I feel like that's that's what happens you know I, it's like frustration turns into anger you know I run up against the block and then I you know get into my head about things. I, I'd say that's, that's the thing that I constantly try to work on. Um, so what's your definition of living in the moment? Do you have one? I'm not sure I have one. I mean, I, I know I've experienced the doing of it and I've practiced doing it. And I, you know, like, I guess I'd say like, it's like putting one foot in front of the other and, and not deciding which step comes next, like letting letting the universe kind of guide you to that next thing and seeing what comes of it, good, bad, different, strange, accepting what it is and, and flowing with it. And I know for my life, like I've experienced, like that gets, I feel like that gets harder and harder to do the older you get. Mm. And, and so I always try to get back to that, but I don't know if I have, of a, if I have a definition so much as like a feeling of a, a feeling of it. And it's definitely something to be practiced. That's for sure. Cool. I love that. Hey, what's one one big audacious goal that maybe you haven't put out in the universe yet? Do you have one? I I okay, yeah. And I don't I, <laughs> I can feel it. I don't know if I can say it, but I um I I I don't know. I feel like um it's to be creative in other realms beyond like the ones that I'm known for <laughs> and to tie them all together in a way. So like, you know, like you know, the fashion space, the 
I, the jewelry space, the the creative art space, like, and figure out a way to like pull them all together in a brand or a being or a something. Like, I think that's like a big hairy audacious goal that I have that I am like trying to figure out how to manifest in a way. Hey, maybe it's that job, that dream job of yours. I think it might be. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. I can see that. I said, oh, I'm going to follow up with that. <laughs> yeah, please do. Keep me on, keep me on schedule. <laughs> oh my gosh. What's the hardest thing you've ever done? Mm. The hardest thing I've ever done. You know, I've, I've led some like Broadway shows or pre-Broadway shows. And I feel like though those are, are the hardest, some of the hardest things I've ever done because it, you have to know the script in and out, backwards, forwards, upside down, your lines, their lines, everyone's lines. You've got this massive production on your shoulders. And you also kind of, beyond your duties of like singing, dancing, and acting your butt off, you have to kind of be the company man and rile the troops and get everyone inspired. And, and you're the face of this giant thing. And so sometimes those, I feel like those are some of the hardest things I've ever done because I'm physically exhausted and mentally exhausted, but still have this really big responsibility to, to get us to where we need to be as a group. And that type of all encompassing exhaustion is, is, is what makes it so challenging. Mm, interesting. So what, so you, you've done it, obviously you, it didn't kill you. So what did I, you, what did you learn? <laughs> what have you learned I, from that? I think I learned that I, that I could do it which um, which was a big thing to learn. Yeah, I remember my first time like leading a show and you know, what was the script? Like 132 pages and I was off stage for three of them, you know, like mm -hmm. I learned that I could do it, which was I think the most important thing that I, that I could learn because it's not something that can be practiced so much as something that has to just be done. And when the challenge is put in front of you, like you'll figure out a way to, to rise to the occasion. And then that was, that really shifted everything for me because when I realized I could do it, I couldn't undo it. I could not, could not do it anymore because you know I have this awareness that I I can do this, yes. and that was a great that was a great great feeling. That's amazing. You know I have this thing I call the choice capacitor and energetic choice. Right. Mm -hmm. So what I, the way I see it, there are five energetic choices. Okay, the five energetic choices go like this. the The first one is I can't. Right. So in your story. You get this responsibility and the thought is, I can't do this, right? But then you push yourself energetically a little bit to the next one, the second energetic choice, which is I have to do this. I have to do this. It's win or lose, black or white. It's like, because if I don't, I'm going to embarrass myself. I'm going to die. I'm going to let everybody else down, whatever it is, right? But that's mm -hmm. I have to, but it's unsustainable. If you go from I have to, right? It's got some energy behind it for sure, but it, you know, you can only last that long. That's where burnout exists. And eventually you're going to go back down to overwhelm, which is I can't, right? Mm -hmm. The third one is just right up. So if you imagine like an arc like this and mm -hmm. is, is, is I should. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now this is what made me think of it because you were talking about, because what I call I should is a little more energetic. You're moving kind of a little bit out of fear and more into possibility. Right. Mm -hmm. But I call I should as I could with shame. <laughs> but if you lose the shame mm -hmm. then you're right up here and you've got i could which is what you just described mm -hmm. and once you're in i could you can go to the next easily not only could i but i want to mm -hmm. and i want to is the next choice and when you go i want to it starts being attached in a good way not attached connected to your why i want to because I want to stretch myself. I want to support my community. I want to, whatever it might be. And once you're in, I want to, and you're already doing it, you're already playing the role, you're already leading the troops, you're there. And when you take the moment, you, you, you're right at the, right at the fifth energetic choice, which is I get to, mm. which is choice with gratitude. Mm. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. And so when you do, I get to do this, right? And it happens. We go through these, right? What do you think about that? 
I mean, I think that's like such a beautiful way to put that whole experience into context. Like, I think I've been through that whole arc in like a single day. Like, you know, like I, re I really do. I think I've like, you know, even in a matter of hours, like I've been through that whole yep. entire freaking spectrum. Yeah. And I love that you just like put it into context in a way that you can like, I can almost see, I mean, I haven't seen your chart, but I can see it in my mind's eye. Mm -hmm. And I think so much of like what we feel it's it's hard to know how to verbalize because we we don't have the tools to and mm -hmm. you know we don't learn these things as a as a young person it's only like when we absolutely need them do we find people along our lives that teach us these beautiful things so i love that it's in a beautiful spectrum form and i think it's so absolutely spot on that's so in the cool. way it's formatted yeah. yeah i'm glad to share that with you i'm glad that it resonated with you <laughs> so far yes i need that i need that i need that chart yeah, well, that's you. I it's yours. Yeah, we can. It's pretty too. I mean, it's quite pretty. It's purple and black. Um, <laughs> okay, let me ask you this. Actually, let me ask you this. Why did you come on the podcast? Why did you say yes? I don't know because I I feel like you, when I looked at the people that you had, you had like an array of like great people, and I like the format in which you did this, like the video, like the video, you know, like the. I, I I don't know. I had like this. I was like, oh, that looks really cool. And I like that. It didn't seem like you wanted anything from anyone, which is, you know, something I experienced from time to time. <laughs> so I just felt like you were interested. And I, I love that too. Like I, I've, I'm always interested in people's stories. I think it's like one of the things that makes us so interesting and unique, like talking to people and figuring out like, why are you here? And how did you get here? And mm -hmm. what do you think about all of this? And that's quite simply like what you do. And I thought that's beautiful and effective and sure, why not? I love that. I also yeah. would add to that, like I would say about like space and holding space. It's not, you know, when I do podcasts or I do blogs or whatever, it's always about something like, you know, a, a project that you're doing or promotion yeah. or whatever. And I think that's important too, but it's very rare that you just talk to someone. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the most, beautiful one of the most beautiful things we have you know the gift of communication and I think like as creative people because there's not so much of this happening mm -hmm. like I know for myself like I have even like the chart we were talking about where I felt like oh my god I can't mm -hmm. and you look around you and you think well everybody else could so I feel single mm -hmm. I feel like I'm the messed up one you know and all of this but it's only it's not, it's only until you get vulnerable to someone else who in the same industry or adjacent industries that you realize we've all gone through this same freaking thing, you know, in our own version of it. And I think like that communal aspect of being a creative person is something that gets lost in the publicity and the, and the shuffle and the, you know, and all the stuff. So it's nice to be able to speak to another creative and have creative people listening and realize like they're not alone in all of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did a no, for sure. For sure. Hey, um, what do you know? What do you know will stay true about you no matter what happens? I think what will stay true is I will always be authentic to myself, authentic to the people around me. I think it will I will always tell the truth and be a truth teller for better or for worse. I think I will always do my best to give back and uplift others around me like I've experienced from others and I think those are the things that I will make sure that they stay stay true no matter what happens mm. and so when I ask you that I mean that came so easily and to my listeners like I don't give the questions to my guests before so he didn't prep that and <laughs> no and it's interesting so it's so it's so ingrained in you it's not like anyone asks you that on a regular basis. I mean, if I asked you the story about how you broke your wrists and, and got into show business, you could rhyme that off with your eyes closed, right? <laughs> but but when I ask you a question like that and it comes up so honestly and authentically, actually, you're, you know, you're kind of living what you're saying. Um, does it does it help? Like, does it help you? I mean, it's always there. But when I actually ask you to, to express it out loud, does that help you re reignite a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I think it like, I think it helps me get back to the root of why I'm doing all of this in the first place, or like why I do any of this at all. And just like actually communicating it out loud, 
is a great reminder to myself. And to be honest, like, I don't, you know, I don't know what comes next in this grand thing we call life, but I do think, I do know that if I hold true to those things, they're, they're pillars along the way that will mm. produce the results that I'd like to see in the world. And I think that's what's most important. Yeah. I'm a, I'm an internal person. I'm always thinking, I'm all, like, especially if I'm like in a, in a work environment, I'm always like, okay, how do, you know, thinking to myself. And I think I'm always a little bit worried about how I'm perceived because I think in those situations I can come off as quiet and I think maybe standoffish or whatever, because I'm kind of like digging into myself and the task at hand. Yep. And so I'm always a little bit worried about that perception of me. And I always like now try to verbalize, like, I'm not, I'm not a bitch. I'm just thinking, you know yeah. what I think? I think silence and I think it's scary. I think it's like, it can be a scary thing to, to, to certain people, like, you know, like, cause you don't know where you stand with someone, but mm -hmm. I have learned over the years to kind of verbalize that I'm just internalizing everything that's going on. And like, that is like part of my process and, you know, something I'm working on, like trying to do that and be open to all people and be a little more communicative in this space. Let's do, um, I always finish with this rapid fire. It doesn't have to be rapid, but it can be. Okay. And um, I'm just going to say what makes you and I'm going to say a word, and then you can just answer. Okay. You ready? Sure. Here we go. What makes you hungry? Food. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you go in your brain when I asked you that? What, what was going on? Well, what happened was I, all, you know, like, I when I eat... I like will be hungry 10 minutes later. So I'm like, what makes me hungry is literally the act of, of food. Like I eat and then I'm like, oh, crap. okay, that's hilarious. What makes you sad? Hmm. Being misunderstood. Mm. Mm -hmm. What inspires you? The possibility of things getting better. What frustrates you? The, the blocks to things getting better. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> it stands to reason. Yeah. That's hilarious. No, fair enough. What makes you laugh? You. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll take that. Yeah, I'm going to stick with that. Um, what makes you angry? Wrongdoing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And finally, what makes you grateful? Reflection. Mm, love that. What are the top three things that have happened so far today? I sat by the pool. I had a really good latte. And I journaled without stopping. Mm. So I completely free full flowed through that, which was good. Oh, I love it. What stops you sometimes when you're journaling? Like what interrupts it? Uh, monitoring my own thoughts. Mm. Like, uh, uh, you know, should it? Uh, I've got uh, you. Yeah. Yep. That. How long did you do it for today? Oh, no, at least minutes. like 30 minutes. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Just, yeah. Just yeah. going, going, going. And do you go back and read it right away or do you just close it? Never. Just close it. That's amazing. <laughs> you never look at it again? I don't, I didn't know. I never do. Oh, that's so cool. How many I have a couple print? of journals though. I was going to say, how many do you have? <laughs> I, have I have so many journals because I buy them and I'm like, oh yeah, well I need that one or I'm going to need that one. Yeah. But I have like, you know, like a bad day journal. I've got like a daily journal and I've got like an inspiration journal. I've got a gratitude journal. I've got a lot. I love of that. I love that. What's something that you're looking forward to today and then long-term? Today, I'm looking forward to getting to the beach in long term, I'm looking forward to things in my life happening, just uh, happening. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. No, it's been such a pleasure speaking with you today. So well, lovely. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Truly. It's been my pleasure. I've been speaking today with Noah J. Ricketts. What's the J for? James.
Noah James Ricketts. I'm Lisa Hopkins. Thanks for listening. Stay safe and healthy, everyone. And remember to live in the moment. Yay. <laughs> in music, stop time is that beautiful moment where the band is suspended in rhythmic unison, supporting the soloist to express their individuality. In the moment, I encourage you to take that time and create your own rhythm. Until next time, I'm Lisa Hopkins. Thanks for listening.